A primary reason for designing experiments is to ensure that variation between treatments is well separated from background or environmental variation. Treatments can be grouped into blocks which are used to adjust for extraneous variation. If these blocks do not contain all of the treatments, they are called incomplete. Furthermore, if the incomplete blocks can be grouped into sets, such that all the treatments appear exactly once in each set, the design is called a resolvable incomplete block design, and the sets of blocks are called replicates of the treatments. Where possible, it is usually advantageous to construct resolvable designs. With such designs, a term for replicates can be included in the analysis to remove extraneous variation in a very efficient manner. We say that replicates and treatments are orthogonal to each other. Here I'll show some examples of how we can use site design to construct resolvable block designs. Site design uses an iterative process to search for a near-optimal design, as measured by the average efficiency factor. In this example, the package has found an optimal design, and so we can proceed to the next screen and view the output. Note the following features of this output. The design properties and parameters are summarized. The average efficiency factor achieves the upper bound. The design has been randomized both for blocks within replicates and for treatment numbers. Site design has put the 4x5 replicates under each other rather than side by side, but this does not matter as at this stage we are assuming the replicates are physically separated. Often there will be possible variation in two directions, so we need to use a row column design. This can be run as a two-stage construction, where site design first tries to optimize the allocation of treatments in the column direction, and then in the row direction. Alternatively, we can do the optimization simultaneously in both the row and column directions using the one-stage option. Normally, for smaller designs without Latinization, which I'll discuss next, one stage is likely to give a better design. The two-stage process can be more efficient for larger designs. Note that within each replicate, no treatment is repeated in either rows or columns. If the replicates of a design are joined together to make a continuous array of experimental units, then we want to ensure that treatments are spread evenly across the long columns of the design, that is, the columns running down from replicate to replicate. To do this, we use the Latinized option. The default is for site design to try and ensure that no treatment is repeated down a single long column. There is, however, the option to extend this over more than one column. This is known as T-Latinization, and I'll show you an example of this later in the video. Here we will assume the replicates are in a single long line, but there is an option for replicates to have a two-dimensional arrangement by increasing the number of long column groups, which I'll demonstrate shortly. The Latinized row column design is one of the most common arrangements used in practice, particularly in field and glasshouse trials. As I mentioned before, there are other choices in the Latinized screen, such as Latinization across more than one row and or column, and layout options for situations when replicates are organized in two-dimensional arrangements. Here is an example of a design for 18 treatments in six replicates, each 3 by 6 where the replicates are arranged in a 3x2 array. I have chosen to Latinize across pairs of long columns and to have two groups of long columns. I've also selected Latinization in the row direction. We can check the layout using the Layout option. For our example, we have two groups of long columns, each with three replicates, but this can be changed, say to have four replicates in the first group and two in the second. In this design, the two Latinization specification has resulted in treatments appearing exactly once in each pair of long columns. In fact, in this example, all the treatments appear in successive pairs of long columns. The option to be able to create further replicates of the treatments by grouping together long columns is an important feature of T-Latinization. 
The row Latinization ensures that treatments are not repeated in the long rows. We also have an option to improve the spatial properties of resolvable designs using neighbour balance and evenness of distribution principles. For a demonstration of neighbour balance and evenness of distribution designs, see the video link in the description below. Whilst resolvability precludes treatments being repeated within replicates, for Latinized designs we can still get diagonal self-adjacencies of treatments. For example, in the Latinized row column design for 24 treatments with 3 replicates, each of size 3x8, Treatments 9, 13 and 24 had diagonal self-adjacencies. There are also a number of treatments that are repeated as row neighbours. For example, treatments 11 and 13 appear as row neighbours in both replicates 1 and 2. The design has a neighbour balance score of 5. By choosing the spatial option in Site Design, we can obtain an efficient Latinized row column design with a neighbor balance score of zero and no diagonal self-adjacencies.